So next we're looking at the Nikon FG and it is a um, Nikon 35mm SLR camera um, manual focus um, manual focus here um, manual shutter advance and um, a lot of manual settings but it has some Nikon's beginning to implement some more automatic settings so a little bit before um, they start doing that but still a part of this I would say classic Nikon era of cameras and um, let's take a look at the functions. First on the front, when you get the camera and you're worried about how to take off your lens, you're going to basically hold down this button right here and then twist to the left to remove the lens. Remember if you have an um, uh, AI lens that you want this to come before that, so moving it over a little bit and then sliding it on so um, it doesn't affect it. Now most of the lenses will go on much easier, so if you have a newer lens on the front. Also some more functions you're going to see here is the exposure compensation button that adds um, two, um, so this is a two stop exposure compensation. Also on the front here you're going to see um, a re re self timer. This over here looks a little weird but this is what it looks like without the grip. This is the side of the camera, the right side of the camera back of the camera. Viewfinder here, film right here, so if you, uh, people cut out their films and put it in so they know what speed it is at. Then the left side of the camera. So that's the main body. Let's look at the top. So the more advanced these cameras are getting, the more, the more busy the tops are getting. Here you're going to see on the top of this camera um, that on this right dial, this is a, the film advance right here. This is actually pretty cool um, function right here. This is actually an uh, a automatic, uh, kind of like a audio warning. So when you're, in, when you're in auto mode and you're really underexposed, either your um, f-stop is too low or some other settings making it so you're underexposed, you're going to get an audio um, warning to change the shutter speed. Back there you have to hold this button right here and move it. So now you can move it freely. But when you go past that and you hit A, it's locked. So A mode is um, aperture priority, P is program. So very similar to modern cameras. P is almost like an, an auto overall. It's a better way to look at it. Here's the um, film counter. Hot shoe, of course. Over here, you're going to see a, um, the first one is exposure compensation. Exposure compensation is right here. And so the front, remember, this is a plus two, um, but on the other side, you can change it. So this would be, but change it all settings. So not just mom momentarily, but for the whole time, it's, it's changed. So you want to leave it at zero unless you're shooting in, in um, d darker situations or a situation where you're never overexposed. At the bottom here, you're going to pull up on this ring. So pulling up lightly, turning it to the left or right, and that allows you to change your shutter speed, your um, ASA speed. It goes from 3200 all the way to 12. To load film this camera, you're going to release the back like this. You're going to place your film in upside down like this and then pull it to the spools on the right in here. Get them in the catches over here. Advance it a couple times. This advance is jammed so you can't do it but then you're going to close your back. And then when you're done shooting, flip the camera upside down. I'll talk about the bottom for a second. So. Camera uses two um, two 1.5 volt batteries to give you three volts. The batteries can be accessed in here. But you want to hit the rewind lever right here. Once that's engaged, you can start rewinding your film. You're going to turn clockwise. You're going to hear it and feel it when it's done. And when it's done, pull up on the back. So then I'm gonna have to use a pretty cool camera. I think um, build-wise, pretty pretty well built. Feels pretty solid. Um, I believe it's some type of metal um, chassis. Um, it does have things I don't like about it, so I don't like a lot of these automatic settings um, and it makes it hard to repair, so if anything goes bad, you're pretty much going to have to find another body to get parts from. Um, difficult to repair since it's electronic. 
button layout feels good, uh, build quality feels good, and it has a lot of great features on it, especially like the exposure compensation button right there and the exposure compensation dial. Um, I probably, these probably go from a price range of about um, 20 to $30. I think if you're getting above 50, I would buy something fully manual. Um, I probably wouldn't pay that much for it, but the Nikon FG, um, pretty good camera. I, I think it's, it's pretty decent and it's, um, and I haven't heard too much about it. So a pretty decent, probably a little bit underrated camera. Remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. Thanks.